Hi, my name is Esquire, and this is my attempt to start a quote-unquote ministry, if you will, in light of several events that have happened over the recent weeks, months, and even years, okay? To get started, first of all, I am a Christian, and I believe that Jesus and his blood and his finished works on the cross are the only way to get to heaven. There is no name given under heaven by which we must be saved except that of Jesus. Also, I believe in the rapture. I believe in a pre-tribulation rapture whereby we will be kept out of the hour of temptation that shall come upon the whole world to try them and to test them that dwell upon the earth. Also, I use several resources. One, I use John Hagee. I consider him to be a good pastor. I use Perry Stone. He is very knowledgeable and I consider him to be very credible. I also use Creflo Dollar and Pastor Joseph Prince. And for those of you who may have a problem with this pastor, I also want you to know I do use Joe Osteen. Okay? We all know how bad we are. Sometimes we just need to know that God loves us. With that being said, there's two things I'm going to cover in this first video of mine. I'm going to cover a dream I had back in 2006, I believe, okay? And the dream I had kind of concerns something that has to do with a lot of these noises that people have been hearing coming from the sky. Um, I've heard that it's been reported for at least the past decade or so that these noises have been coming from the sky, which, in my opinion, that's very recently in this whole scheme of things. Also, I'm going to do one teaching, my first teaching, and it's going to be called law or grace, whether you live under the law or whether you live under grace. Now, with that being said, when I finish, I'm going to close it out with a prayer, two prayers, one for those who have not come to believe in Christ as their Lord and one for those who may already believe but may have backslidden. So, I prefer to just go ahead and get started. Let me go ahead and find the dream. And for those who don't know, I use the King James Version of the Bible. King James. I don't use any other version. I use other versions for reference points. But King James is my blood and water. So, without further ado, we're going to go to a dream that I had. Let me find it here. And it is... It's going to be in the back. I'm sorry. You're going to have to give me one second. Here it is. Now, this dream I had, I had back in 04, 4, 06. Okay? And it goes. I, Esquire Jones, a servant of the Lord, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, saw by night in a dream, and behold, I was on a trail. I don't remember what I was doing or how I got there. As I stepped off the trail, I heard a voice coming from out of the sky, which seemed to be everywhere but had no source. And it said to me, now my people, now is the time to sanctify thyself and to cleanse thyself, for now is the time. He who will be unjust, let him be unjust. He who will be saved, let him be saved. As I heard this voice, I shook. And the whole time this voice spoke, a strong wind was blowing everywhere at once. So I got back on the trail and started running. As I ran, I came across a group of people. I told them about the voice and what it said and that it meant that the coming of Jesus Christ is at hand. Then I continued down a pathway where I saw two more people stepping off the trail going into the brush. And I said nothing to them. Then I turned and I looked and I noticed one person from the first group of people that I had came across. He was running, following me, trying to keep up with me, screaming, Wait for me. As I got to the end of the trail, I saw a guy sitting down. I said nothing to him also. 
I walked a little further, and as I was walking, I saw two bright lights coming towards me, getting bigger and brighter. Then as they hit me, I woke up. Here, too, is the end of the matter in the dream which I dreamed upon my bed. Now, I'm not really a dream interpreter, but I have interpreted something out of the dream that says, I will preach to large groups of people. And very few will listen to me. And by the fact that it was only one person out of a large group of people, I believe that that means even fewer than I think will listen to me. With that being said, I may say things that are controversial because I deal with certain things like eschatology, the end times, prophecy. I know about CERN, the vortexes that have been going on in the sky. Um, the demons that supposedly be at the gate of CERN, I know about all this. So from time to time, as I release videos, you may hear me say things that are controversial. Please do not send me hate mail. I won't read it, but I will take criticism and I will take extra knowledge on something that I may have missed or misunderstood or misinterpreted. With that being said, we're going to move on to the next thing. My first teaching. Law or grace? We're going to start off by reading the law. For those of you who may know the law. That's okay. This will be a refreshing for you. For those of you who don't, take the time to memorize it. The Ten Commandments. One, you shall have no other gods before me. Two, you shall not make unto thyself any graven image to bow to it or worship. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God. Three, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Whosoever does shall not be held guiltless. Four, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you labor, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. Five, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land. Six, you shall not kill. Seven, you shall not commit adultery. Eight, you shall not steal. Nine, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Ten, you shall not covet your neighbor's house or anything that belongs to your neighbor. These are the Ten Commandments. Or, as Romans Chapter 13, verses 8 through 11 says, You can owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loves another has fulfilled the law. For this, for love, you shall not commit adultery. You shall not kill. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love works no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Romans chapter 3 verses 24 and 5, 28 and 31 tells us, For all have sinned, all, no one is excluded. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace. Through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ, whom God has sent forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. By faith, we establish the law. Romans chapter 8 verses 3 and 4 says, For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Romans 5, 1 and 2. Therefore, being justified by faith, I say that again, therefore, being justified by faith, not law, faith, 
we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. There is hope and we rejoice in it. And it's the hope of the glory of God. Romans 3 verse 19 says, Now we know that whatsoever things the law says, it says to them that are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Now, on this point, I think he did that to make everyone on equal terms. There's no one better than the next. You are all equal. Don't judge another man. Look, the point is, whatever the law says, it says to them who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. That's why the law came, to make everyone guilty. That's what the Bible says. Whatsoever the law says, it says to them that are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world become guilty before God. Because by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. You can't do the law and be justified. By the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight because by the law is the knowledge of sin. And that was the first commandment broken in the Garden of Eden. They came to the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, Unto all and upon all them that believe. There's no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely through his grace, through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. In summarization, what I'm saying is by faith, we establish the law. By love, we fulfill the law. By walking in the spirit, we fulfill the righteousness of the law. And by faith of Jesus Christ, we manifest the righteousness of God without the deeds of the law. And we are justified freely by his grace through the redemption, which is the redemption of our bodies, which is the adoption. We are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. There is now no condemnation to them which are in Jesus Christ. Romans 4 verse 15 says, Because the law works wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed. And that word imputed means charged too. So sin was not charged where there is no law. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounds, grace did much more abound. There has to be more grace to forgive you of your sin. One person steals something, there has to be a little more grace than the thievery that he committed to forgive him. And another person murders, which is a greater sin, so there has to be even more grace than that sin to forgive him of that murder. God condemns no one. Only one is condemned is he who refuses to believe in his son. Now, does this mean we should continue in sin that grace may abound? No. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer in sin? Know you not that as many of us that were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. That the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should no longer serve sin. You are servant to who you give yourself over to. If you serve sin, then you have given yourself over to it. We are dead to sin. We have given ourselves over to Christ. We have been buried and resurrected in a newness of life. For he that is dead is free from sin. In Romans chapter 6, verse 14 says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under sin, or under the law of sin, or under the law. But you are under grace. 
Romans chapter 6 verse 18 says, being made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Christ is truth. John, 1 John, chapter 2, verse 22 says, Who is a liar? But he that denies that Jesus is the Christ. He is antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. If you deny both God and the Son, you are antichrist. But if you deny just that Jesus is the Christ, then you are a liar. Whereby you know the Spirit of God Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist whereof you have heard it should come. And even now already is in the world. And of course you know this because a lot of people now deny Christ. A lot of the bishops and the cardinals in the Catholic Church have come to deny that Jesus is the sole way to God. Jude chapter 1 verse 10 goes on to say, but these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know as brute beast in those things they corrupt themselves. Why? 1 Timothy verse 4 verse 1, chapter 4 verse 1, I'm sorry. He says, now the spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Second Peter 2 verse 1. Even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Jude verse or Jude chapter 1 verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares. And I think this word unawares even means not una is only unawares to us. But also they are unaware to themselves that this is why they have come into the church. But he goes on to say. There are also men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men. Turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ so then this begs the question if Jesus is the only way to God and denying him is condemnation then who is Jesus who is the Christ John Chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, coupled with verse 14, tells us. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and God was the Word. The same was in the beginning with God. All things was made by Him, and without Him was not anything that was made. And all the world, I'm sorry, and the Word was made flesh. And dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John 3, 16 through 18. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish. I'll repeat that. That whosoever believes in him, not do certain things to please him, but whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent his son not into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believes on him is not condemned. But he that believes not is condemned already, even now, before the time. This is your condemnation. You do not believe. He who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God.
And we know that name, full of grace and truth and power to be Jesus, the Christ. And all things are of God who reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not charging their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Jesus is the word of God, manifested in the flesh as the son of God, in whom God himself dwelled in, reconciling the world back to himself. Grace or law? Believe with your whole heart in Christ. You may slip and fall from time to time. That's okay. If you are a parent and your child slips and falls and you do not disabandon, you do not disown him, what makes you think if you slip and fall now that you have come to Christ, that Christ now disowns you? It doesn't make sense. God is a better father than you can ever be. The law says, I have to work. Grace says, I have to let God. This is my attempt to start a ministry. If you disagree with anything I said, please send me some kind of rebuttal to let me know. I'm going to release several more videos and I want your support and let me know how I'm doing, if I should modify anything. And I'll take anything into consideration, even if I need to spruce up the background a little bit. With that being said, I want to close out with a prayer. So if you are not a Christian and if anything I said has helped you in any way to understand God and come to know Jesus a little better. Then I would like to lead you in a prayer. So please bow your head. Lord God. I am a sinner. I have sinned exceedingly and I have not given you your glory. I have not known your son. I have denied your son. But this day, Father, I want you to know I'm coming home. Lord Jesus, the Son of God, my King, I ask you to come into my heart Fill my heart with your spirit. Refresh me. Wash me clean with your blood that I may be righteous. I give you myself. Take me. Accept me. And do with me according to your will. I give my life to you. In the name of Jesus by his blood and his finished works. Father, I give my life to you. I surrender. Amen and amen. Now, I also know that there are a lot of Christians out there and we do a lot of things that are not right. It doesn't mean that we are condemned. It just means, you know, we have disappointed our father and there are certain rewards that we may have that we may have already lost, but we can regain them. But we don't lose our salvation at any point, only denying Jesus. So if you are a Christian and you feel you've backslidden, and you feel that some of this may have helped you out or you just want to say the prayer, I invite you to say the prayer. So please, would you bow your head with me? And those of you who have just come to the faith, bow your head and pray with me. Father, my Lord Jesus, I have disappointed you. I have acted as a prodigal son. I have taken what you have given me and I have squandered it and now I think that it is right to come back to you. That's okay, Father. I ask you to forgive me and know that I love you. Refresh me. Lord Jesus, rejuvenate me. Do not let me fall by the wayside. Lift me back up by your holy hands. 
Make my life clean again. Keep me righteous. Girdle my mind. And make easy and rest my spirit. Forgive me of all my disappointments to you, Father. I come back and I start afresh. Lord Jesus, plead with me and stand by me and walk with me. In your holy name, I put my trust and my faith. Amen and Amen. If you've prayed those prayers with me, and I want you to know, if you prayed them from the heart, believing, then you have just entered one of the most glorious things that you could ever have entered into your life. You have entered into the kingdom of God, a kingdom that is not of this world and is not bound by this world. A kingdom that will come. A kingdom whose king is eternal. I encourage you to go to church and look out for my future videos. And also get into the Bible and read for yourself. Increase your knowledge. Because the only way you can get rid of those evil thoughts that come into your head because the thoughts of men are evil continuously because wickedness lies in our hearts. The only way for you to get rid of those thoughts or to have anything to battle them by is with the word of God. The double-edged sword. The one thing that can make the demons and the satanic forces of this world leave you alone. Now, with that being said, you won't always have a perfect standing. You won't always go through life without tribulation because you will have tribulation in this life. But for you, your tribulation will come here and now and not later, nor will you be here for the tribulation. So take your tribulations with a smile. God bless you. You have a great day.